Hey oh everybody, Haku here with my review for Tower of God Chapter 364, Season 2, Episode 285, or 284. I was about to say 5. Either way, I have a lot of notes on this one. Uh, sorry this is a few days late, by the way. Uh, it seems like thing after thing keeps cropping up and uh, pushing me further and further back when it comes to uh, getting this video out. But I've done pretty good with trying to get as much as I could done this week. And uh, yeah, we're moving on to this, and I've decided on which anime I'm going to be reviewing weekly, so uh, I won't bother talking about them now. I'll maybe mention them at the end of the video, but uh, for now, let's get to talking about this. This had a ton of content this week, like a whole hell of a ton. I took notes on this for probably a good two hours, at least, maybe more than two hours. I was taking notes on this uh, chapter for a long time, especially the early parts of it. I thought the early parts of it were just really, really good. Um, of course, I was a little in the reaction stuff. You can tell I was a little bummed at the end. I think Zahard's coming in too soon. Uh, and then, even then, during reading it, it's not like a bunch of huge shocks where it's like big emotional things, but it's a lot of really cool information and good character work. Uh, but either way, um, then uh, we start off with Edwan continuing to explain what happened between him and the dad of Zahard and all that, where we left off um, at the end of last chapter. Uh, but he says that he actually once tried to enter the hidden hidden floor, but then he noticed that everybody he knew had been deleted. Everyone had been deleted there except for Zahard and the big breeders. And... Um, that was the impetus, the reason that he was like, yeah, no thanks, I'm going to stick around in this mirror world. Um, good and bad with this, I think mostly good, I'm alright with it. Uh, it kind of ruins the point of the hidden floor. The whole point of the floor itself is to house all of these big, crazy, powerful people, the younger versions of themselves and stuff. But if all of them have been deleted, then the entire point of the arc, seeing all of them, has kind of been uh, demolished and replaced. Uh, but either way, I think it's fine because one thing that, even though I was super excited to see the young versions of all those big bad characters, I wanted to see the younger versions of all of them, it also arguably would have lessened when we got to see the real current version of that person. So now this kind of covers CU's tracks. Now he doesn't need to reveal what they're like or what they look like. He can just save it for when we do meet the real version of them. And uh, I think it's fine to do this with Edwan out of... I think it'd be fine if CU chose any of them to put in Edwan's place, but it's particularly important being Edwan. Uh, just because it's going to come into play with Kuhn's story later on. Um, but, other way, uh, moving on from that, I think we cut to the next scene there. Yeah, that's when we cut to the next scene, which is um, Yu Han Sung and Bomb's group. Yu Han Sung is thinking to himself, and he's suspicious of Icarus. Basically, he's uh, being our uh, exposition here, telling us what happened when we were away from that group. Uh, Misang is still asleep, hasn't woken up, or still unconscious. Um, Yuan Sung, very suspicious of Icarus, though, notes that it's pretty incredible and it kind of matches up with her story, some of the stuff she's able to do, but if she's able to just heal people, why isn't she able to wake up Misang? And he's just thinking that it doesn't all quite line up. And next came a really, really fun scene, I thought. Um, Kuhn being watched by everybody and then Andrasi wanting to know about a sworn enemy. I like that because I think we haven't had a lot of those interactions in a while where it's just the group. I think that maybe we need to take a few chapters here and there every once in a while to just have the group hanging out and developing their characters by interacting with one another. I feel like we haven't seen that in a while and I liked seeing it here. Uh, but it was a fun scene. And uh, we get more story about Kisea, which was great. Um, Kisea was Kun Agro Agnes's mom's sister's daughter, so uh, his first cousin. But uh, her Kisea's mom died, and then Kun's mom took her in. Agro Agnes's mom. I keep calling him Kun, but I feel like that can be confusing since technically they're all Kun. Uh, but either way, Kun and Kisea they were raised as siblings and had an older sister as well who was close to being a princess, and this older sister had a cold personality. Kun Agaro Agnes wasn't really expected to do much himself, but he was expected to be a strategist and to 
elevate his sister to the point of being a princess. Kiseya, also seeing all of this, wanted to be part of that. She wanted to um, make Kun's sister a princess as well. So, uh, Agaro Agnes mentions that we've already kind of been told before, fighting in the Kun family is kind of an everyday life kind of thing. So, uh, Kiseya, he says, was an excellent swordsman even when they were kids, and she managed to uh, eliminate their sister's rivals. Um, then, all of a sudden, he said, a uh, rival for a sister came out of an unexpected place. Her name was Maria, and she came to Agro Agnes looking to learn his sister's secrets, because she figured he would know all of the weaknesses that his sister has. And for his own reasons that we don't know yet, and I would say maybe it is something to stand out against the Kuhn family, to break away from this only expectation as being a pawn to help her. Um, but for whatever reason, he betrayed his sister and helped uh, Maria become princess, which we already know about. And because of the failure of his sister, we learned that she committed suicide. Now, Igor Agnes brings up back in um, present time out of his story, he says that he thought he was over it. He thought all that was done with and in his past, but Kiseya being his sworn enemy proves to him that he's not quite over it. He's still anxious about her. He still thinks she might come after him deep inside. So uh, I think, again, that's cool, the way Agro Agnes was able to uh, sort of um, analyze himself like that. But at the end, he says, it's no big deal. Never mind, it's not a big deal. Uh, and then, in turn, for uh, sworn enemy story for sworn enemy story, we get, Andro we get Andrasi's sworn enemy story. So uh, apparently Andrasi, before she was taken in and raised by the, uh, by the ruined part of a ten family or whatever, she was actually taken in and being raised as a normal girl. Uh, but then one day a snake came to her and told her to take the gem and she could become a princess. So of course she took the gem to be a princess. Both of her parents were killed, and she doesn't know for sure that it was the snake, but she basically presumes it. She doesn't know for sure, but to herself, she knows for sure. Uh, she blames it for killing her parents, and then her backstory as we know it starts. So uh, it's cool. We got a backstory before the backstory. Um, and she said that it was after she realized, um, it was after she became a princess that that's when she realized it, that it was all part of the uh, snake's plan, everything that had happened. Um, and he had killed her parents, presumably, to uh, lead her to becoming a princess and everything. And again, at the end, she puts out an obvious lie, saying that, you know, she wouldn't have wanted to be a normal girl anyway, so it's fine. <laughs> it's no big deal. So uh, she says that, and Kuhn can tell she's lying. Of course, he's the wily liar himself. He can tell that she's lying. But Bomb can tell she's lying because of logic. Bomb is like, that story doesn't make any sense whatsoever. If it was no big deal, if you didn't fear or hate this um, snake charmer more than anything else, it wouldn't be your sworn enemy. Your sworn enemy is what you fear or hate the most. That's why Bombs is himself, and hers being the snake charmer means she fears or hates the snake charmer more than anything in her life. Uh, whether that's like an upfront fear or a subconscious one that she doesn't realize how deep it is um, doesn't really matter, but I think she does realize it. I think that she's just sort of lying to put up a front in front of the snake charmer because it is currently with her, even if it is just a data version. So, uh, yeah, she's obviously lying. They then make it to the Golden Dome, which is part of Huang's territory. Uh, they bring up that Huang is, like, the strongest or the most leader-like of the big breeders. Uh, but either way, they all get split up, and I like the way they're all split up a lot. Rachel senses someone when she gets there, so she makes her excuse to, uh, leave, and it's, uh, it was neat seeing, um, Yuan Sung's reaction to that and Kuhn, the way he spoke to her. So Rachel takes her leave, and I like how everyone had their own reasons, and it was very logical the way they split up. Bam and Yuan Sung saying, okay, let's go look for potential allies that are here. Um, Andrasi and Rack going to the highest point, because of course Rack is the spear bear, and Andrasi's the one who can, uh, carry people around the easiest. So I like how it all really made logical sense. Uh, we see that the place is populated with a bunch of robots, which could make you think how many data people are really actually there. We've seen very, very few, basically none. Uh, we've seen Yu Han Sung 
and then the uh, Kuhn family that's working with Edwan, and that's basically it. Everything else has either been NPCs or robots. So it's pretty weird. Who knows how many people were just deleted, which again kind of ruins the point of the hidden floor, not as an arc, but as a place. Um, so I'm not saying it's a bad thing, it's just that this place was meant for this purpose, and Zahard completely ruined the purpose of it. Uh, he was like, uh, no thanks. And of course, at the end of the chapter, Zahard confronts Bomb way too early, in my opinion. But it is what it is. Uh, so some thoughts as a whole before I get into blog stuff. I thought the backstories were so good. The backstories were definitely the crux of this, the best part of it. I like that it's stuff that we learned all the way in Volume 1, not only coming back around, but getting more development, more explanation, and more added to it. Uh, so I really liked that coming into play. And uh, I thought great character development came hand in hand with that. We saw a lot with Agaro Agnes and Andrasi just in them telling those stories in their reactions to it and their point of views and their points of view of them. So uh, yeah, I thought that that was all great. Uh, the one thing that I don't like was the hard coming in too soon because it doesn't give us a feeling of our main characters earning it or have done anything for it to happen really. Um, and it's kind of the same thing with Hell Joe, where we didn't see them go through this journey through the hidden floor here. Uh, we didn't see them, I don't know, we didn't see them defeat any of the big breeders, any of the underbosses. We didn't see them do anything that makes it feel like, oh, there's this payoff when they finally see Zahard. It feels like he just sort of showed up. So it's like, oh, well, whatever. And Hell Joe kind of felt the same way. Did, we didn't see the characters beat his henchmen. We didn't see them go through this journey. Uh, he just showed up and said, hey, I'm here. Let's fight or talk or whatever happens. So, uh, and that's kind of what's happening here with Sahard. Whether he wants to fight, whether to test bomb, to destroy bomb, whatever he's thinking, or whether he just wants to talk with him and see what another irregular is like here and what the deal is with all of this. Um and how we can use the Black Hole Sphere. But either way, I just think it's too soon. I think that this, what we're going to get, the interaction between Bomb and Zahard is going to be good, but I think it's coming too soon in this arc. Uh, and then in the blog, um, so you mentioned a few things, just talking about Zahard mostly, saying that he always wanted to hide Data Zahard's face and not show it yet. At first he was just going to pixelate it because it is Data, uh, but then he decided that would that wouldn't be very good, so we just decided to go with the mask because it fits well with his three red eye motif anyway. Um, and he said he also wanted him to seem like an ordinary person who is on the journey to becoming an extraordinary person. That he was always talented, a genius, and a regular, but he wasn't always a king. He wasn't King Zahard. So it's a person who's on the journey from going from man to king. Uh, and then, uh, he also says, unrelated kind of to the storyline, he says that he's being examined for a bad organ and he blames his recent lack of exercise. And I've said this a million times, so I won't say it again in detail, but I'll just say that he really, he really needs to take a week off every month or a week off every few weeks. A week off every two months even wouldn't be that bad, but putting out a chapter this long, because each chapter of Tower of God's really long and the art's detailed and nice, Putting out all of this every single week without taking weeks off is way too much. Uh, not only do I not know how he's maintained it this long, it's been I think over a year or maybe nearly a year since we've had a week off other than Korean Thanksgiving, which I think we might have had a week off then. So yeah, other than that one holiday, I feel like it's been every single week with no weeks off. So. I, that, that's too much. The guy needs a break. And I said I wouldn't go into it too deeply, but it's hard for me to not go off and say that, oh my god, see you, just take, take a break, because I don't want him to, like, kill himself never taking a break, pretty much, and then be just so worn out from never taking a break that he needs to take a super long hiatus, or that, um, he just gets burnt out with Tower of God and is like, I don't know what to do and he just uh, starts making mistakes or whatever in his own in his own opinion things that he would go back later and say are mistakes because he's burnt himself out so uh yeah i think he needs way more breaks but uh either way 
given this a score, I already said my piece on the chapter basically, I'd give it 9 big deals out of 10. Um, 9 out of 10, it was really good. I really enjoyed it. Other than Zahard coming in, which I think is a little disappointing, uh, that doesn't take away from how good the actual content we got in the chapter was. So uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. I had fun with it. I hope you enjoyed the video. So like if you did like the video, comment down there. Tell me what you thought of um, this chapter, what you thought of my thoughts on it. Real quick before I end it, I will say subscribe for this and more anime, manga, other things on the channel. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and say that right now I've decided weekly I'll review Mitsuboshi Colors, um, Kokoku, Kokoku, and um, uh, what was the third one? Citrus. Those three I'm going to start reviewing week to week. I don't think I'm going to review Sora Yori Motoi Basho or Violet Evergarden. I don't think I'm going to review either of them. But if there's enough people that say, yes, we want you to review them, and if there's enough demand for it, or if I get to like three, four episodes in, and I'm like, man, I really want to review these, then I'll just throw them in here somewhere. I'll do what I want, you know? Um... So if there's demand or if I really want to, I'll throw those two in because I do like both. I just don't know if I really feel like reviewing them right now unless people really want to discuss them. Uh, but I know that Citrus Kokoku and uh, Mitsuboshi Colors are three that I do want to review right now. So I'm going to go ahead and start reviewing them weekly. Uh, then... I guess that's it. Like, comment, subscribe, follow on Twitter if you want. I can try to keep you updated there and stuff for the channel. And if you want a link to our Discord server, just ask and I'll give you one. That's it. Thank you once again for watching. I'll see you all next time.